Hi all, welcome back to a new session. Today we are going to discuss 50 very important questions from obstetric and gynecological nursing. Before beginning the session, I have a request to you. If you have not subscribed this channel, kindly subscribe the channel by pressing the subscribe button below. And you can also watch the videos subject wise if you are going to the playlist in this channel and you can see the playlist of different types of subjects and go to each sub, uh, subject videos and watch those videos. So today we are beginning with the questions. The first question is fetal heart, heart rate can be auscultated with an ordinary stethoscope as early as which of the following? 5 weeks of gestation 10 weeks of gestation, 15 weeks of gestation, 20 weeks of gestation. So what is the answer? It is 20 weeks of gestation. Next question. The nursing intervention to relieve morning sickness in a pregnant woman is by giving a dry carbohydrate foods like crackers, low sodium diet, intravenous infusion and acids. So what is the answer? The answer is obviously dry carbohydrate foods like crackers. Next question. Fetal head is in which of the following position with face presentation? Completely flexed, completely extended, partially extended, partially flexed. So what is the answer? The answer is completely extended because face is the presenting part. In placenta previa marginalis, the placenta is found at the internal cervical os partly covering the opening, external cervical os slightly covering the opening, lower segment of the uterus with the edges near the internal cervical os, lower portion of the uterus completely covering the cervix. So what is the answer? The answer is lower segment of the uterus with edges near the internal cervical os. Next question, which of the following would be there in abruptio placenta? Bright red, play painless vaginal bleeding, concealed or external dark red bleeding, palpable fetal outline, soft and non-tender abdomen. So what is the answer? The answer is concealed or external dark red bleeding. So that is the characteristic feature of abruptio placenta. The first one bright red painless vaginal bleeding is character of placenta previa. So next is the second stage of labor begins with delivery of the baby, true labor pains, complete dilatation and effacement of cervix, passage of the show. So what is the answer? The answer is complete dilatation and effacement of the cervix. Very important. Then when the fetal head is in the level of ischial spine, it is said that the station of fetal head is, it is minus 1, 0, plus 1, plus 2. So here the ischial spine, the ischial spine is the reference point. So that is taken as 0. So the answer is station 0. Next question, Kegel's exercise is done in pregnancy in order to, the Kegel's exercise is done in pregnancy in order to, A, strengthen the perineal muscles, B, relieve backache, C, strengthen the abdominal muscles, D, prevent the leg varicosities and edema. So what is the answer? It's obviously strengthen the perineal muscles. Next question, which of the following is a presumptive sign, presumptive sign of pregnancy? Hagar sign, nausea and vomiting, jacumeous sign, positive serum pregnancy test. What is the answer among the following? That is nausea and vomiting. It's a presumptive sign. Which of the following amounts of blood loss following normal delivery marks the criterion for describing postpartum hemorrhage? More than 200 ml, more than 300 ml, more than 400 ml, more than 500 ml. So the answer is more than 500 ml. Which of the following assessment findings would be expected if the client develops DVT? 
DVT. So uh, the uh, options are pain, tenderness and redness along the vein, chills, fever, malaise, headache, calf muscle pain, the presence of home and sign and swelling in the affected limb, chills, fever, stiffness and lower abdominal pain. What is the answer? The answer is calf muscle pain, presence of home and sign and swelling of the in the affected limb. So home and sign is an important aspect of DVT. It's an important sign of DVT. The nurse documents positive bellowment in the client's prenatal record. The nurse understands that this indicates which of the following. So what is a positive bellowment? A, a, the uh, options are A. Palpable contractions on the abdomen. Passive movement of the unengaged fetus. Fetal kicking felt by the client. Enlargement and softening of the uterus. What is the answer? The answer is passive movement of the unengaged fetus. When describing dizygotic twins to a couple, which of the following would the nurse base the explanation? Two ova fertilized by separate sperm, sharing of a common placenta, each ova with same genotype, sharing of a common chorion. So what is the answer? Dizygotic twins. So the answer is two ova fertilized by separate sperm. So there are two zygotes. That's why it is called dizygotic. Which of the following refers to single cell that reproduces itself as after conception? Chromosome, blastocyst, zygote, trophoblast. trophoblast. Which is the single cell? Here on a single cell. So the answer is zygote. So zygote is the first single cell which then divides and reproduces to form a fetus. Amniotic fluid of a client has a greenish tint. The nurse interprets that this to be the result of which of the following. So greenish tint of the amniotic fluid. Lanugo, hydramnios, meconium, vernix. What is the answer is meconium. So meconium staining gives the greenish tint to amniotic fluid. Next question, which of the following may happen if the uterus become overstimulated by oxytocin during induction of labor? So overstimulation, overstimulated by oxytocin. So there will be weak contraction or prolonged to more than 70 seconds, tetanic contractions prolonged to more than 90 seconds, increased pain and bright red vaginal bleeding, increased restless, restlessness and anxiety. So what is the answer? The answer is tectonic contractions prolonged to more than 90 seconds. So hyper stimulation of uterus causes tectonic contractions prolonged to more than 90 seconds. The following are the ways of determining expected date of delivery when the LMB is unknown except. So in one case LMB is must, all other case LMB is unknown. So what is what are the, uh, the options are? Nagel's rule, quickening, McDonald's rule, fruitful coitus. So what is the answer? Nagel's rule. Because in Nagel's rule, we are calculating the expected date of delivery by knowing the LMB. Which of the following statement is true in RH incompatibility? The condition can occur in the mother in RH negative and fetal RH negative, fetus is RH negative. Every pregnancy of an RH negative mother will result to erythroblastosis fetalis. One pregnancy of the RH negative mother, the fetus will be will not be affected. Then RH ogam is given only after the second pregnancy. So these are the options. The answer is on the first pregnancy of RH negative mother, the fetus will not be affected. Because in, during the first pregnancy, the mother gets immunized, isoimmunization happens and uh, this will cause uh, creation of antibodies in the mother and the second pregnancy will be affected. So that is the option. Then when uterine ruptures, uh, uterine rupture occurs, which of the following would be the priority? When uterine rupture occurs, which of the following would be the priority? Limiting hypovolemic shock, obtaining blood specimens, instituting complete bed rest, inserting urinary catheter. So what is the first priority? So it, you, you can obviously say the answer it is limiting 
hypovolemic shock. What is the measurement of suboccipital pragmatic diameter in a fetal skull? So, what is the length of suboccipital pragmatic diameter? The answer is 9.5 cm. On which of the following areas would the nurse expect to observe cloasma? Breast, areola and nipples, chest, neck, arms and legs, abdomen, breast and thighs, cheeks, forehead and nose. So, cloasma is found over the cheeks, forehead and nose. So, it's a facial discoloration. So, there will be cheeks, forehead and nose discoloration. Which of the following is the nurse's initial action when the umbilical cord prolapse occurs? So, what will we do when there is umbilical cord prolapse? Begin monitoring the maternal vital signs and fetal heart rate. Place the client in a knee chest position. Then uh, notify the physician and prepare the client for delivery. Apply a sterile warm saline dressing to the exposed cord. So the first action would be place the client in a knee chest position in bed. Which of the following is true regarding the fontanelles of newborn? So the options are given. Anterior is triangular shaped, posterior is diamond shaped. Posterior closes at 18 months and anterior closes at 18 week, 8 weeks. The anterior is large in size when compared to the posterior fontanel. Anterior is bulging, posterior appears sunken. So the answer first clearest and the correct answer among this is anterior is large in size compared to the posterior fontanel. Which of the following is described as premature separation of a normally implanted placenta? Premature separation of a normally implanted placenta. Answer uh, the options are placenta previa, ectopic pregnancy, incompetent cervix, abruptio placenta. So the answer is abruptio placenta. Which of the following factors would be would the nurse expect as predisposing a client to placenta previa? So what is a predisposing factor uh, in placenta previa in the given list? Multiple gestation, primary gravida, abdominal trauma renal and vascular disease so answer is multiple gestation in multiple gestation there is a chance for placenta previa fetal skull the coronal, coronal suture runs between so in fetal skull the coronal suture runs between two parietal bones parietal and frontal bones two frontal bones parietal and occipital bones so answer is parietal and frontal bones as soon as the placenta is delivered, the nurse must do which of the following actions? Inspect the placenta for completeness including the membranes. Place the placenta in a receptacle and a disposal. Then label the placenta properly. Leave the placenta in kidney basin for the nursing aids to dispose it properly. So the answer is you have to inspect the placenta for completeness of the cotyledons including the membranes. So, there should not be any placenta remnants in the uterus. It will predispose to severe infections. The following are the correct statements about false labor pain except the pain is irregular in intensity and frequency. The duration of contraction progressively lengthens over time. There is no vaginal blood, bloody discharge. The cervix is still closed. So, the answer is the duration and contraction progressively lengthens over time. It is a characteristic feature of true labor pains. To ensure that baby will breathe as soon as the head is delivered, the nurse's priority action is to a suction the nose and mouth to remove the mucus secretions, slap the baby's buttocks to make the baby cry, clamp the cord about 6 inches from the base, check the baby's color to make, the, make sure it is not cyanotic. So answer is suction the nose and mouth to remove the mucus secretions. We have to suction the mouth first then nose. So, M uh, before N. So, M, N. Mouth should be sucked first, then nose. So, that is the primary action to ensure proper breathing. The drug usually given parenterally to enhance uterine action is terbutaline, pitocin, magnesium sulfate, lidocaine. So, we give usually pitocin drips in order to facilitate uterine contraction. Pitocin or oxytocin. When the bag of water ruptures, the nurse should check the characteristic of the amniotic fluid. The normal color of amniotic fluid is clear as water, uh, bluish, greenish, yellowish. So the answer is clear as water. The partograph 
is a tool used to monitor labor. The maternal parameters measured are the following except vital signs, fluid intake and output, uterine contraction, cervical dilatation. So the answer is given, it is answer B. So the answer is fluid intake and output. The following are the signs that placenta has detached except lengthening of cord, uterus becomes more globular, sudden gush of blood, mother feels like bearing down. So the answer is mother feels like bearing down. So the other three are the signs of separation of placenta. Very, very important. Lengthening of cord, uterus become more globular, sudden gush of blood. So these are the signs of separation of placenta. The other one is not the sign of separation of placenta. Primary power involved in labor and delivery is, what is the primary power? Bearing down of the mother, cervical effacement and dilatation, uterine contraction, valsalva manner. So the primary power is obviously it is the uterine contraction. That is the primary thing to facilitate labor. Normal umbilical cord is composed of two arteries and one vein. Two veins and one artery, two arteries and two veins, one artery and one vein. The answer is two arteries and one vein. Two AV is the cord. Two AV, two artery, one vein. What is the stage of labor and delivery? Does a primary gravida differ mainly from a multi gravida? So, what in what stage of labor the primary or primary gravida differ from a multi gravida? So. This the answer uh, options are stage 1, stage 2, stage 3, stage 4. So what is the answer? The answer is stage 1. Stage 1 is much more prolonged in case of primary gravida. Normal labor fulfills the following criteria except spontaneous in onset at a time, presentation other than vertex without undue prolongation, natural termination with minimal aids. So the answer is presentation other than vertex. All other are normal uh, labor criteria. The following are the skin changes in pregnancy except cloasma, stray gravidarum, linea nigra, Chadwick sign. So it's very simple question. The answer is Chadwick sign. The most common and norm, a normal lie of a fetus in utero is most common and normal lie, transverse lie, longitudinal lie, oblique lie, unstable lie. So the answer is longitudinal lie. The normal site of implantation in uterus is upper uterine portion, mid uterine area, lower uterine segment, lower cervical segment. The answer is upper uterine portion. The four, which of the following signs will distinguish threatened abortion from an imminent abortion? Severity of bleeding, dilatation of cervix, nature and location of pain, presence of uterine conduction. So the answer is dilatation of the cervix. Shoes with low broad heels plus good posture will prevent which prenatal discomfort. Backache, vertigo, leg cramps, nausea. So the answer is backache. So that's all for today. So you will come with more questions. Stay tuned to this channel and study well. Stay focused. Thank you.